Welcome back to another one of my vlogs. In this vlog, I'm gonna talk about caching strategy, what it is and how to plan a caching strategy for your applications. So as most of you know, I'm building a course currently on clean architecture and dynamic feature modules. And I've decided to add a network layer to the application because hey, let's, let's face it, all applications pretty much have a network layer. It's very rare to find a real application that doesn't access the network and the cache. So first of all, real quick, what exactly is a caching strategy? A caching strategy refers to the plan that you have in place as a developer of how the data is gonna come from the network, get stored locally on the device and get served to the user. Likewise, how the, how the data is gonna get stored on the device or created on the device and then sent out to the network so that it can be accessed from other devices. Let's quickly take a look at the app that I'm building for my next course and this next project that I've been working on. And I'm gonna outline kind of what the requirements are for this caching strategy because I think that's a really good place to start. You really need to understand what your app is going to do, what the purpose is, why the data would get sent to the network, why it would get sent to the cache before you start planning out your strategy. So as most of you know, it's a simple note-taking application. I can create a new note, just you know, some random title here, click OK. That will then insert the note into the cache and it will also insert the note into the network, into Firestore. So I can obviously update that note, like if I clicked on it, I can make some changes to it, click the check mark. That would also update it in the cache and update it on Firestore. So that's kind of the first requirement. The first requirement is inserts. So I, I have kind of a list that I'll keep track of the things that we need to do. Number one is inserts. When a new piece of data is inserted into the cache, that also needs to get sent to the network, to Firestore. And number two is updates. So if a node is updated in the cache, it needs to also get sent to Firestore to reflect that update. So once again, like I just showed you a few seconds ago, if I was to click on one of these notes and just like make some kind of a random change to it, click the check mark, that should get applied not only to the cache, the local cache, but also sent out to Firestore on the network. Now we come to the third point. The third point is going to be deletes. So this one gets a little tricky. This is definitely where the strategy requires a lot more thinking. So suppose I wanted to delete a note. Now, one of the ways that I can delete a note in this application is simply by swiping this out. So when I delete that note, I get a little notification here that says pending and I have the ability to undo it. If that transaction is complete, I want to not only delete it from the cache, I wanna delete it from Firestore, from the network. So why does it get tricky when it comes to deletes? Well, number one is I have the ability to undo it. So like I said, if I was to swipe this out and I was to click undo, that has to get reinserted into the local database and also reinserted into Firestore. So that's kind of the tricky thing, number one. The number one tricky thing, I guess you would say. So what else makes delete operations tricky? I'm gonna bring another device on the screen here to illustrate what I'm talking about, another reason why the elites are tricky. So suppose we have a second phone, and this is true for most applications. You should be able to open an app on any phone or even open an app in some cases on a web browser, apps like Trello, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of these apps, if you were to open it in the web browser and make a change, submit something to the, to the network, no matter what app you open that on and whatever device, the data is gonna be the same. So you want the behavior to be the same in this application. So over here on the left, I have the app running on my real device. If I was to click on a note, say just this first one up here, notice that the content says Nido Mosquito. I'm gonna add some exclamation marks to this and I'm going to click save and then go back. So I expect that when the app launches on the emulator, I should see the exact same content. So let's go ahead and launch that on the other device. I'm gonna click the app and it's going to load up. Notice it shows a splash screen for a couple seconds, and then it actually takes you to the list of notes. So if I was to click on this, we expect it to say the same thing, which it does. So we know that that's working correctly. So what I did here was actually when the app starts up, so let me just close it and reopen it. When the app starts up, it actually does a data syncing process. So that's what's happening when the splash screen is in view. As soon as the app starts, it looks into Firestore and compares it with the notes that are in the local cache. And what does it do? Well, it does a couple things. Number one is it looks in Firestore and it finds any notes that have a date newer than the ones that are in the cache. So it searches all the notes in the cache. It says if the date is older than what it finds in the network, then it updates it from the network. And likewise, if it finds a note that is newer in the cache, it then updates the network. So you get kind of the best of both worlds there. The tricky thing here is deletes. So let's take a look at the demo here again. So what happens if I delete a note on my real device? Does that get affected or is that reflected in the other application on the emulator? So I'll launch the app again on the emulator and we expect to see that the note was deleted. So we should not see it in the list. 
And there we go, the note is definitely not there. So coming back to our list that I was kind of keeping track of the, of the operations with, we have inserts, updates, deletes, and then the fourth point here is data syncing. I know I kind of skipped over it and I gave you the demo before giving you the point, but I wanted to make sure I put it up on the screen here. So inserts are pretty straightforward. You just literally, if it inserts into the cache, you insert it into the network also. Updates are exactly the same. You update it, you update the network. Deletes are a little trickier, but generally if you delete it from the cache, you then delete it from the network. I'm gonna talk more about deletes in just a second here. And then there's data syncing. So the reason you have to have data syncing is you have to, if you open it on another device or a web browser or something, you need to make sure that the data in that cache is the same as the data in the network and therefore is the same as the data on all the other devices. Now let's briefly come back to deletes because there's a couple more fine points that I want to point out about it. So how does this work? You know, how if a note is deleted from one device, how does the other device know that it was deleted? There's a couple ways you could go about this. The two kind of major ways that come to mind probably for you right away is number one, just you know, query every single note that exists in Firestore. And if the cache has one that the network doesn't, you should delete it from the cache. There's a couple holes in that logic, so let me just point those out. Number one, of course, is performance. If you're constantly, if every time the app launches, you're querying every single note from Firestore, every single note from the cache, as you get more and more data, that's going to get exponentially slower. So if you ever can help your, if you can ever help it and not have to query like every piece of data, that's generally what you want to do. You want to, you want to optimize that if you can. The second sort of big flaw with that type of logic is what happens if you deleted a note, but somewhere down the future, you wanted to like you were like, oh crap, I shouldn't have deleted that. It had like some really important information. There's no way to look up that like history, I guess you could say. And you can consider like uh, Gmail or any kind of email provider as an example. Suppose you delete an email, that deleted email usually goes into some kind of trash can or archive for at least you know a few months. That way, if you have that oh crap moment, you can go back and look through the archives and find that deleted content and restore it. So if you're keeping only one list, obviously that's not possible. Once it's deleted, it's gone forever. So the second way that you can do this that I see, so we just looked at number one, which was keep everything in one list in the network. The second way that I see, which I think is a better way, is to keep a secondary list in like some kind of a deleted section. So if you take a look at Firestore, let me just show you my structure. So the structure goes like this. There's a notes collection and there is a deletes collection. Then inside of that is a user ID. So if you had a lot of users, imagine this would be like a ton of users. And then they have all of the notes here that they have inside of their notes collection. Likewise, deletes is exactly the same. You have deletes, you would have the user, all of the other users in the app or that are using the app would be right here. Then they have a notes collection and this is all the deleted notes. Just to give you kind of more of a visual, let me pull up a diagram. So here is what the notes node would look like in Firestore. You have notes, then organized by user ID and then notes and then all of their notes in a list. Likewise, you would have the deletes node. So this is literally pretty much exactly the same other than there is a deletes collection at the head of the at the head of the whole hierarchy instead of a notes collection. So basically we're saving two lists. We're saving a list of notes and we're saving a list of deleted notes. So I'm gonna bring the app on the screen here and I'm also gonna have Firestore in the background so you can see exactly what happens in the database when a delete happens. So here I have the phone. I'm just gonna scroll down and delete kind of a random note, but I'm gonna make sure I'm, I have the deletes collection selected. So I'm, I'm in deletes, I have the user ID, and then there is the collection of all the deleted notes, all the notes that have ever been deleted. So watch what happens when I delete one of these. I'm just gonna swipe this out. We're gonna watch Firestore and notice that a note was added to the deletes collection. Likewise, if I was looking at the notes collection, I would see a note was deleted. So a note is removed from notes collection and a note is added to the deleted collection. Now, if I was to launch that app on another device, which I'll do right now, let me just launch it on my real device. It's now doing the data syncing process and now notice that that note is no longer in the app. So what happens here is it launches and it looks inside of the deleted notes collection if there are any notes in that deleted notes collection that exist in the local cache, in the database cache, those are deleted. And like I said, I think this is a good way to do it because it's optimizing for speed. You know, you don't have to look through the entire 
network to find which nodes need to be deleted. You can just query that deleted node, see if any of those are in the cache. If they are, delete them. It's definitely a faster operation. And you have the ability to go back if you wanted to add some kind of feature in your app later on to look at like archived notes or archived content. You could add that very easily and just allow them to browse stuff that they've deleted in the past. You could also, you know, on top of that, if you didn't want to keep a bunch of stuff on your server for too long, you could write like a cloud function, or if you were using an actual server, you could write some kind of a function that would run in the background that maybe every three months or something, it would go through deleted notes and then just delete them, just kind of clean them up. So one last thing before we go, I'm sure some of you are wondering why I'm doing the syncing only when the app starts. So for example, if I click the app, it starts, it goes to a splash screen, it does that data syncing process, and then it goes into the note list. So why am I doing it uh, only when the app starts? Why aren't I kind of listening in real time? And to be honest, the only reason I'm not listening in real time is because it's just more work. In a real application, if you were launching, you would probably have like a website, you would have an app, maybe it runs on tablets, all of these kind of things. So you definitely would want it to be listening in real time because if you had it open on your tablet, you had it open on your phone, you change something on the tablet, you would want it to show on the phone immediately. Likewise, if you had some kind of a web component, if you changed it on the web browser, you would want to see that update in the app immediately. This app is, uh, it's a learning project. So I didn't implement this functionality. I didn't really think that you needed to because we don't have a web component. Theoretically, the user using this should only ever be using it on one device, maybe two. If And if there's two, they're almost never gonna have, you know, one phone open changing a note and then another phone open changing a note. That's just not gonna happen. So I think in this scenario, we can get away with it. But definitely, if you were building a real project, you would have a website, you would have other devices that it's running on. You would definitely want to be listening in real time. All right, so to kind of leave you with some parting words or some parting advice when you're as you're trying to plan this network caching strategy you always i guess you want to look at the edge cases you want to try and think of um well first the easy stuff you want to think of okay what happens when i insert obviously you're inserting what happens when i update obviously you want to update deleting is deleting so those things are pretty straightforward you know insert update delete whatever querying data obviously query the data but when it comes to the edge cases we're talking about multiple devices or like a web component. So what you wanna handle the syncing of the data. How are you gonna handle the syncing of the data? If something is inserted, how is that gonna reflect the data on another device? If something is updated, same thing, other device. If it's deleted, what does the other device do? You have to think of the other device. How does the other device always reflect the correct data state or data. That's gonna be it for this video. Remember that the project that I showed you in this video is gonna be part of a course on my website on clean architecture and dynamic feature modules, where I'm gonna build this note-taking application where you can create notes, update notes, delete them, and uh, also, yeah, query them. I think I said query already. And all of this is gonna be syncing to a cache and then also syncing to the network on Firestore. Um, we're gonna start with clean architecture and then we're gonna write tests, we're gonna make sure that everything is working correctly. I wanna show you why clean architecture is so powerful, why everybody loves clean architecture, and really it comes down to testing and organization. Those are the two main, main reasons. And then we're gonna move into dynamic feature modules, which is like further abstraction, further levels of organization, which I will talk more about that in other videos because this is already too long. Now, before you go, do not forget to like the video. Do not forget to tell YouTube that you like this video because if you don't, YouTube will not recommend my videos to other people. Again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.